not a huge amount because we 100,000% identify as an independent filmmaker. And we have for, I have for 50 years. Uh, so this work is huge. It's, it's our community, right? Yeah, you know, Julia started making films uh, before there was, like, film independent. Before, before, there, was like, before there was an idea that you would give awards for independent films. So uh, it's it's very, very meaningful. And it's meaningful because our, our, our friends, our comrades, you know, we voted for, for this film. So although we're deeply proud of all the other nominees, those are great films. Forsama, The Cave, Edge of the, uh, uh, Apollo 11, Honeyland, uh, they're all great films. So. They actually risked their lives, some of them, to make yeah. their films. Yeah, All we did was like walk factory floors for years in like heavy boots and some, you know, protective glasses. And that's all we did. But they risked their lives. So. Julia, one of your early documentaries was called Seeing Red. Yes, Seeing Red. Seeing Red. We saw it. Yeah. Nobody knows. Right. <laughs> you just mentioned in your acceptance speech, income inequality. Yes. I go back a long way as a socialist. Well before Bernie Sanders. I mean, I go back to the like 60s. I'm old. Uh, do I think socialism is the answer for our country? Uh, we should go in that direction, right? We should share the wealth. We should tax rich people more than they are. We should health care should be for all. That's, it's more like democratic social, what I would call democratic socialism feminism. That's what I have always been about. And nobody ever asked me that anymore. You know, it's funny, the things that we used to believe in in the early, late 60s and early 70s, we used to talk about socialist feminism, democratic socialism, worker power, and then like through all during the Reagan years and all after that, nobody talked about that anymore. And now we're talking about it again. Well, you know, documentaries, so you're asking about the tension between the United States and China and what, where does this, why does this film matter at, at this time? We hope the film polarizes, de-escalates the, 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 the sort of everyone running to the barricades that we've seen, you know, uh, this, um, it's way too tense, and it doesn't need to be. I mean, it's really both presidents, both President Xi of China and President Trump here, have made things unnecessarily um, polarized. And we hope our film gives humanity and empathy to working people, whether they're from China or the United States or any other country, because uh, too many decisions are made by, by the powerful people based on data, based on profit, and uh, humanity is being lost in that process. Um, this is the first, sorry, this is the first documentary yes. made by the Obama. So, what is their support events and how involved are they in a production? So this is the first documentary released by the President and Mrs. Obama's new company, Higher Ground Production. What is their support meant and, and how do we feel about it? Is that, no, what's uh, their involvement? And what's their involvement, yes. Uh, well, the, the President and the First Lady, their new company, Higher Ground Productions, you know, it was formed uh, in 2018. They came on board with our film when, it, when our film premiered at Sundance in 2019, along with Netflix. Higher Ground and Netflix. Higher Ground and Netflix have a production deal. Uh, they saw the film at the world premiere and they made us an offer. And we were very excited about the possibility of this film being the first release of Higher Ground Productions. Uh, the, the president, the first lady, and their team have been incredible supporters of the film and it helped to get further out into the world than we could have imagined.
That's been a good rule. But you know what? We are a team. I mean, all of us here made this film together. And it's and some people who are not here made this film together. It was deeply, deeply collaborative. On the factory floor, cinematographers like Jeff or Aubrey or, 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 or Eric would disappear. And they're making decisions as filmmakers because they're on their own for hours. And in the editing room, people were cutting scenes and finding material that just, um, they were doing original creative work all along. It's a huge time effort. Thank you. Where did the channel come the idea of Puffle? I always wonder if that's just a documentary comes up with an idea or the script. Oh, 100%, there is no script. Yeah. Oh, is there a, where did the germ of the idea come from? Well, you know, we live in Dayton, Ohio. So this happened in our hometown. So the General Motors plant closed, which devastated our town when the economy collapsed. Our big General Motors plant closed. And we made a film about that called The Last Truck, closing of the GM plant. Jeff was on that film as a one of the camera. And um, you know, you fast forward, the plant remained closed, raccoons lived in there, homeless people lived in there, it was a blight on our community. Then we got the word that a Chinese entrepreneur billionaire had bought the plant. We were going to be manufacturing again. And we got approached actually by people who helped get them there. I know it's a long story. Who helped get them there. And they came, they said, Would you like to make a film in this about this historic event? This Chinese company, Chinese billionaire. We said, we would be interested, but three things we had to have. No money from the company. They had no rights to edit the film, and we had to have access. No closed doors. And the chairman, Chairman Zhao, to his credit, said yes. He said yes, and he never took it back. Even when things got rough, <laughs> things got really rough, he never took that back. And I have to credit Chairman Zhao for um, allowing us in there. He would have been coming to the Oscars, but because of the virus in China, he can't come. And we're very sad. We'd like to be back with him. 